I'm at a gypsy. So with the, you, you kind of brought up something cool before when you talked about Nitro, uh, the practice in the car park and you didn't have any sponsors and, and any logos. Is it crazy to you to think that you were that guy only a few years ago and then you pulled together enough funding to build a quarter million dollar landing and you're a factory Husqvarna rider? Like there's some crazy shit that's happened to you in the last few years purely based off like the level of riding that you've been able to do. I mean, that must have been a pretty hard journey to kind of get to that point. Yeah, I think like the results talk, you know, and I've always kind of relied on that. Like I knew I was a good rider and I'd go out to the hills as a nobody and I helped shovel a lot of the jumps that were in the, the Chase in the Storm movies and stuff. And, uh, and I always kind of show, like, showed my skill out there. So I kind of knew I had that part, but... uh. But definitely it is a trip. I think I'm finally used to it now and I'm starting. I've got, you know, different LLCs in a corporation and I'm yeah. I'm juggling like things, you know. I've got my own property we're building out uh, at my I, I bought like 10 acres out in the desert and uh we're building this, some of the sickest stuff I've seen and I'm stoked to release that coming up and and then the YouTube and the merch and uh and then just my sponsors and keeping them all stoked and then competitions, you know, so juggling all that, it's crazy. But um but yeah, I remember back then I was literally homeless, you know. Um, living like I, I was sleeping in my truck going into my first X Games and I borrowed a van from Militia to drive out to Minneapolis with a couple buddies and uh just for the quarter pipe was the only event I was in. And I just, you know, trained for that. And I just had one goal and, and I kind of relied on that in a way. I was like, you know, one day I'm going to get this like first win or, you know, just my invite to X Games was huge. Uh, but then I showed like at Nitro for practice, that was before my first X Games. And I went higher than everybody that day too, you know. So I was like four or five feet higher than uh, Axel the first day we practiced at Nitro uh, on that big ramp. And Pastrana was so stoked on me that day. It's just like checking off these crazy things. Like Pastrana's giving me a high five. You know what I mean? Who would have thought? Yeah. But uh, but yeah. I mean, I had like a couple sponsors. Um, some like dispensary, cannabis dispensaries were helping me get to X Games that year. But uh, yeah. I just kind of really didn't do a whole lot of like talking or whatever. I just focused on my craft and what I could pull off at a contest so it's like yeah. you know be ready like cut weight show up with a good bike show like put in the extra days on the practice for quarter and then ever since then it's been the same thing and I think it's just um you know every year I keep proving myself that I'm a guy to beat or whatever and I've won the last few of them so yeah it is a trip though I, I always like think about that like man yeah, I was I was bouncing around from couch to couch for years and I would work construction like two jobs at the same time just to save up enough money so I could quit both jobs and then go yeah. stay in my van and go free ride all winter because I wanted to make a name for myself. And I knew if I was out there every day, you know, I'd, I'd start networking, meeting people, um, try to get sponsors. So it was like. I'd run out of money and I'd be like, shit, you know, I got to go back. So I'd go back into LA and set my mattress up in my van and go grind. Like I'd work nights and then, uh, clock out. And then I'd go find it. I had a day job too. And I didn't tell my bosses I was working both. So, uh, I, but I was like about to get fired by both bosses. Cause they're like, dude, what are you doing? Are you not sleeping? You look like shit, man. You're showing up just <laughs> like, you look haggard and I come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm just like, dude, I slept like two hours, like a night or in between jobs I've running on like eight hours of sleep for five days you know I'm just but I'd I'd stack both jobs uh and then some of the night guys would want to work till like four or five a.m you know some nights like they wanted extra hours or whatever and I'm like dude you guys want to clock out and they're like no what are you pussy I'm like I'm gonna go clock in in like three hours dude I gotta work days too but I'd do that and then I'd save up and then I'd, I'd be able to go stay in my van or whatever sleep on couches down in the Inland Empire and then I'd go free ride all winter and I just kept grinding because I saw it. I kind of could tell I was flipping stuff before other guys. I'd be like doing just as big as whips as some of the, the big name dudes in the hills. And I uh, just put it all together. And then the quarter pipe thing was like saved my whole like life because I'm like, dude, free riding is sweet. But the quarter pipe was where I could really excel. And then mm. I put it all together. And yeah, it's been a mission, man. But my sponsors are taking care of me. And yeah, I've won the last few years and now I've got new stuff going on and I'm starting to put more effort into my YouTube channel. It's been so much fun. So 
um just keep grinding you know try not to get hurt dude i i just i love it man like i just that's the story that you want to it's the story you want to hear and i just feel like it's the guy that you know you want to be and i just think like we just live in such a world these days where people want everything and they want everything now and it's like to to be that guy that just grinded and grinded and worked two jobs and you know like then lived in a van it's just that's the shit that i i wish more people because everyone wants to be colby raha that's there right now you know but that colby raha that's there right now five years ago was sleeping two hours a night and doing construction job like that's the same colby raha so it's like if you want to be the colby raha right now then you've also got to want to be that guy too and it's like there's no there's no promise when you're the guy sleeping in the van working two construction jobs back to back that you're going to be the guy that's sitting there right now there's no there's no guarantees and i think that if there was a guarantee like if there was if someone came to you and said like if you just do this for five years this is where you'll get up to then i think everybody would be down to do it but when there's no guarantee bro and you're the guy that's like got to get up to that fucking alarm like that the respect yeah. level you've got to have for that guy is just through the roof and then you d- you've earned everything you've got yeah yeah it was uh i remember sleeping in the van working two jobs and i'm like man if i ever pull this off this is gonna be a cool story you know but it <laughs> could have easily not worked out and i just would get so mad because i was i was kind of like on the fence of free riding or uh i wanted to race kind of supercross stuff so i was doing the uh, ricky carmichael's road to supercross it was the arena cross stuff and uh and i would save up all this money and i'd just be going through it at work like man this shit sucks i'm just gonna get out of here and i'm gonna go grind and i'd take that same work ethic to going out in a uh, mountain biking and then i'd show up and i'd blow through all my money you know tires and gas and oil and i remember after uh, i drove all the way to cincinnati in my van with a flip phone on like no map even i'm just like 10 to 20 freeway to the all the way up to cincinnati and then I get there and I get cut off in the first heat race and uh, it's like some squirrel is like a rutted section and uh, just dislocated my left shoulder and I couldn't pop it in for a little bit. And I'm like, dude, I couldn't ride. The next week I went to Baltimore and I tried to ride and it's the whoops was just so gnarly. I had my shoulder taped. I'm like, dude, I spent so much money. This racing stuff is just out of control. So now I'm just going to go home and I'm going to start free riding. And then I was doing the same thing, but actually I was like saving my money and lasting a lot longer, um, off of what I'd saved. And, um, and then it just, everything started coming together and, and then I just remember those times and I'm like, dude, you know what? I'm going to take the same approach to what I'm doing. My friends are like, you want to drive to where and go like, chop down a fence and build a ramp and jump this and that and like what that sounds like a mission and i'm like dude it ain't that bad we got this like grab all my cordless tools you start building a ramp testing it oh it's like too steep man i'm gonna land flat i'm gonna blow up my wheels i gotta build a longer one but i just you know i just like put in that whatever it takes to get you know whatever i think would be sweet uh that's the goal i'm just gonna put it all together and try to do it you know and that was kind of the goal back then too is like I know I'm grinding and working but my goal is to like I didn't think I'd make money at it so I started my YouTube channel back then just riding uh the hills and filming with a home video camera and I'm like at least YouTube will kind of pay and then if I need to I can ride freestyle shows and then at least I'll be riding my bike and we'll see what happens at least for now and then uh and then just being out there all the time and then like I said the quarter pipe thing came up and I was like I can get an invite to X games, you know, like that's, that's it. I got this. And I just put in the work and got the quarter pipe going and, uh, and then showed up for that. But yeah, you just put a goal together and kind of figure out the steps it, it takes to get to the, to the end goal and try not to get hurt and all that. Dude, dirt bikes are so gnarly. You can wreck so hard on them, but if you prepare, right, you know, you're, you're pretty much good. So it's been a journey, man, but yeah, I'm blessed. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.